is Sydney's northern beaches. It's a playground for sun lovers. <laughs> where every day is a celebration. Northern beaches, go on. That keeps the cops busy. Go away. Get out of my face, please. In your face. So when things get too hot... Get out. I'm not going to tell you again. At this point in time, you're under arrest. No, no, just, mate, just stop. Stop there. Stop there. He's going to run. These cops keep it cool. Where's your ID, mate? We're trying to take, you, trying home, to take you home, bro. Can we get a supervisor to our location with a drug bag and scales, please? Beach is 15, copy, code red, 5 to 10. Cool. You guys finished acting like idiots? Welcome to their world. All right, guys. Let's get going. This is Beach Cops. It's early morning and well past closing time for the bars in Manly's Corso. Wow, that went so long we could even walk up to you. Come over here. Don't walk away. Ah! It's a $550 fine for what you just did. It's like an expensive bathroom stop. I think your friends find it pretty funny. It sucks. Yeah, you have no idea. It's so bad. Thanks, Wayne. I hate you. I hate you. That was like the world's longest week. It was. It went on and on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but things are about to heat up. He's heading up Dali Road towards... Up Dali Road. Victoria Street. You ready for a run? There's just been a violent attack around the corner on the Corso. What have we got? All we've got is they've taken off up this way. We've just had a call from another car crew that have witnessed an assault on the Corso, and they're currently chasing four uh, suspects for the assault. Where's the victim? Victim's locked out. The assault, from what we hear, seems pretty serious. The guy was knocked out, unconscious for about 15 seconds. He's since come to, but it looks like he's got some uh, loose teeth and possibly a broken jaw. So by now we've got quite a few police looking for these guys, especially this one that we've lost. Okay, Where'd you see him last? He's running up this way, so he's gone south up either Dali Road or Copy east that. into uh, the street here. Through there. Just down by one there. Oh, they're here. Have you got someone? Yep. 24 to 25. We've got a few police that are looking at this, um, so it gets a bit chaotic. We've got one police officer with the first guy arrested. We've got police on scene with the victim, and you know we're here with this guy. Yeah, one seven seven. One at the rear. Yeah. Two more out there. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I just We're obviously didn't do stopped anything. you because you're running away yeah. from police oh, tonight. I am running away, but I don't why are you running away? Because I just was scared. What are you scared of? Just because that was all my friends and you guys were chasing us out of nowhere. What, so you didn't think to stop and just clarify with the police? I, did, I, I like, first did stop when you first arrested my friend Hagen. So obviously you're going to run away, you're going to cause us to be suspicious. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, so who are your friends that you're with? I was just, I, I'm just friends with Harry. Who's Harry? That's the one that's calling me. The first one that you arrested. So why would Harry be calling you if he's under arrest? Hagged he mustn't be, because they must have let him go, because he wasn't involved. All right. That's involved the same in as what? Me. Apparently a fight. Were you involved in a fight? No. You can check all the cameras. I'm not involved. OK. All right, well, we're going to go for a walk out here. Right. He's denying being involved in anything. So we try and we're trying to work out what went on, what we've got. And, you know, people don't always tell us the truth. How many mates were we out with tonight? Just the one that first got arrested on Victoria Street. We were in Victoria Street. And now where's he now? He's obviously been let free because he tried to call me. OK. So I don't know. Thanks. OK, bye. Um, victim's not saying anything. Didn't want Ambos. Told Ambos to go away. Doesn't want to um, play the game. At this stage, the victim isn't really cooperating with us and doesn't want our help. So if he doesn't want us to do anything on his behalf, there's not much else we can do. So next time, perhaps don't run, just speak to us. Yeah. I and mean, this could have been dealt with in two minutes, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. We've got a pretty good CCTV system on the Corso, so that will give us the evidence we need if we're going to pursue this investigation. The 
that much though, mate. No, I don't. What about you? No. While Gibbo and Andrew are waiting to make a right-hand turn, they see a cyclist run a red light. Oh, oh do we want him? He just went through a red light. Yeah. Oh, the cyclist. And he's not wearing a helmet. I don't think he's going to get the message. We're just driving along, actually pulling into the station, and uh, far left lane is a bus lane. The bus gets his filter. The cyclist in front of us decided to keep going. Straight through the red light, and he almost got clipped by a bus. The situation is you're riding a bike, One you almost got cleaned up by a bus. Yeah? And you're not wearing a helmet. I'm a pretty reasonable guy, but. One night copy, thanks. The police car was right there and you still went through the red light. The car goes through a red light, not wearing a seatbelt, gets the same tickets. Helmet is the same as a seatbelt. You made the decision to go through the red light. And if you, you're not wearing a helmet, I don't need to tell you, you're an adult. You get cleaned up and that's it, you're done. The police don't like cleaning up messes on the road. It happens, unfortunately it happens. The hardest part is going to tell your family that you got run over by a bus. So today he'll be receiving an infringement for proceeding through a red traffic light and the second will be riding a bicycle without a helmet. The ticket's about upwards of about $800 in two infringements. Now what are the chances? It seems like bike riders are a bit antsy this morning. Is he thinking about it? Let's get him. Mate! Over here. Walk. Oh. Not targeting them this morning. We're actually heading into the station to complete the two tickets for the first cyclist. And lo and behold, this cyclist decides to go straight through the red light in front of us. He was going to go run. Yeah, he was. He was thinking about it. He was thinking about it. But he did have second thoughts. All right, let's go get coffees. Police generally deal with a couple of people at a time. But this afternoon, they're about to contend with thousands. An open invite on social media has resulted in a pop-up beach party. Do you reckon they're going to finish up here? Oh, a couple of hours. It's going to be crazy. I'll still be here for a while. This is the challenge of policing in the in the social media age. I mean, this thing just drops on us. 3,000 people, um, you know, 10 years ago, we would have never got anything like this. And uh, it's a new challenge and you've got to be up to it. The police have been aware of the growing crowd, but as it moves towards night, Northern Beaches Commander Dave Darcy is concerned. It's time to move everyone on. We can't keep this going at this sort of rate, going into dark. People are going to get injured. There'll be fights, there'll be sexual assaults, there'll be drownings. It's just not on. It's too dangerous. You can see people out there now intoxicated uh, swimming. Uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous cocktail. In the dark, it's multiply that by about four. Have you guys got any open alcohol? Yeah. Don't open anymore. We're just going to go through um, looking for anyone that's drinking alcohol. It's an alcohol free zone, so it's just going to get worse and worse if we don't put a stop to it now. Hey guys, all alcohol has to be tipped out, unfortunately. It's an alcohol-free zone. Uh, once we clear this area, we're hoping the crowds will disperse and then we'll move on back to Fairlight Beach. Can I just tip the beer out for me? Stop drinking, please. Tip it out. Yeah, so we've started phase one of the operation, which is to go and tell everyone that this is an alcohol-prohibited zone. Moving in, but there's a lot it's moving out. Yeah, it's thinning out. It's good. Yeah. If we do this bit well, hopefully when we start the next section, it'll be it'll be fairly gentle, and uh, and uh, we won't have too much resistance. Yeah, we're just about to uh, form the extended line on the beach. With only an hour until sunset, the public order and riot squad have been called in to help. So what we're going to do is start at the beginning of this opening here and just gradually move people out in a very controlled way. They use a pack and out. Yeah, yeah, sure. thank you and hopefully get them to move on down into Manly, where we've got a uh, transport node. They're waiting to take people away into home. The second phase is a lot more difficult. In 
intoxication levels are high, as you can see. Half an hour later, it's done. They've managed to clear almost everyone out without any trouble. I think the plan has worked really, really well. You know, this is a challenge of social media and uh, it's a fine line in policing between, you know, using public space and, and danger. And uh, my judgement today was if I would have let that go to tonight, um, that would have ended in tears. There would have been a fatality. Um, absolutely certain of that with those levels of intoxication the uneven surface, the water, um, you know. You've seen the comments on fun police, but um, I can go home and sleep tonight safe and I did my best. Seriously, I'm gonna scream at the seatbelt fire. Yep. Can you go again, R2-D2? I couldn't understand you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I was pressing the wrong button. Gilly, do you know it? See? Wait. <laughs> Wait. Oh, sorry. Like, seriously, I keep... Got it? Stupid seatbelt. Gilly, do you know any backpack? Stupid. You walkie-talkie stupid. <laughs> There's plenty of people enjoying a night out in Manly. The beach cops are walking the Corso. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. And Mari is on call for any officers that might need her. Yep, so my role tonight, uh, it's Saturday night. I'm the South uh, Mobile Supervisor. So it means I go to every sort of job, um, provide advice to the general uh, duty staff and liaise with detectives and the duty officer when required. Uh, two bikes, one is a white. Giant mountain bike, and the second is a black polygon mountain bike. And it doesn't take long to get her first call. Three teenagers have been caught stealing a couple of expensive bikes down near the beach. I do anything that I want to, anything you say or do, I may report in court. You understand that? You're not free to leave, you're under arrest. All right? The reason is I suspect you've got stolen goods. All right, so we're going to go back to the station later. Family police station. Sit down, champ. Don't OK, out. mate, take your hand away from the These are not hand up here. What is it? Who's in What's in here? What is it? So I've arrived on scene. There's three males being detained by my car crews. Uh, one of the males, I could see, had his hand on the jacket and I thought there was an object in it. Um, so when I've taken the, the uh, jacket away from him, I've unraveled the jacket and there's a set of bolt cutters. Um, so that was in possession of the gentleman in the middle. OK, so they'll go back to the station for parents to be contacted and... That's right. All right. Yeah, we'll okay. take it from there. OK. It's Saturday night, you know, they're only 14, 15, so it's, what, 10 o'clock at night, they should pretty much be home. Yeah, Beach is 12, are they in a position to come to my location and convey an offender? It's very rare to get guys carrying around bolt cutters with them, so that's pretty brazen. All juveniles, all placed under arrest. They're going to go down to Manly. We're going to get in contact with their parents. Jump in there for us. We'll turn the light on for you. And then uh, we'll question them in front of their parents and we'll take it from there. And uh, we'll proceed with charges if necessary. Your ice cream? No, thanks. Let's do it. Mm -mm. Is that noise? Mm. <laughs> 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 Let me hear you shout. Too tired. Need coffee? Yep. Might even need a double shot. Double shot, ah. Maybe an espresso. Uh, uh, macchiato. Macchiato. Oh. 
Absolutely. Yeah, those are the French as far as Adam Street. Just in case. Just get one person is trapped in a vehicle. Red job. It's not even 10 minutes into their shift, and Sam and Terry have been called to a code red. So it's just up from a, but it's a code red accident. Two cars involved, a person's trapped. Uh, not no injuries. There's been a collision, and one of the drivers may be trapped in their car. One person's trapped, any other injuries, so... Beaches, 339 on the scene. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Do you know... The other car's there. They just, they managed to move it out of the road. Yeah, so someone trapped in this one? So just go and have a walk. Okay. All right, thank you. So we just rocked up here at this accident. Um, this white Mazda seems to have come through, off the road, straight through the fence and stopped in the uh, front yard of this house. No one's injured in this case, which is quite lucky, um, considering driver two has ended up through a fence. Do you feel like you need to sit down? Because you can still stay seated in the car if you want, though. Um, if she had had a passenger, I think the passenger would have been injured through the impact, but her airbags didn't deploy. Mate, um, which one's your car? That one's the uh, Subaru up there. OK. Turns out driver one, who's a young male pea plater driver, was delivering a pizza. Um, he was heading down this way and has lost control going into the corner to go towards Forest Way. Um, when it's lost control, it's hit the back end of the white Mazda, causing the white Mazda to lose control as well, ending up in the front yard over a fence. Just bumper damage. The damage to the two cars is quite bad, but they've been pretty lucky tonight. No one's hurt and everyone's walked away from the scene. I'm just getting a phone number for the owner. Here. So we're going to drive this lady home because you get, her car is no longer drivable. Yeah. You got your seatbelt on, darling. Hasn't got a car. Can't make a walk in the rain. No, can't make a walk. Can you drive her home? Ugh. Yeah, look, that young fella doesn't think he was going quick, but he's, he was obviously going too quick. It's, a, it's an all-wheel drive car. Doesn't lose traction all that easy. This missus isn't going to be happy. It's okay. No, you're going to be in the doghouse. <laughs> I'm going to be just 15. Death is something cops never want to see on the job. Radio, this morning we got a job about a guy that hadn't returned home or turned up to the rehab hospital he was meant to turn up to yesterday. We're just going to take a look from the... Aaron and Michelle are hoping it won't be the outcome of this missing persons report. We're about to go up to search for our missing person. Just wondering if you could raise Polair, please. So this gentleman that we're looking for has made some comments to friends last night um, that cause us a bit of concern and that uh, make us uh, worry that he might do something and we need to find him as soon as possible. He was last seen on foot at Curl Curl last night, but as mentioned, he has made threats in the past to jump. So, and I spoke to his dad, and his dad hasn't heard from him uh, since the police last spoke to him last night. We've got Paul Air on the way to do a sweep of the cliff tops that we can't access on foot and also to search the base of the cliffs that we can't see. Like that's one of your common points there. Oh, is that? The top one and the bottom one. With these types of jobs, we just have to make sure we do everything we possibly can to help these people uh, obviously find these people first and then get them the help that they need. And look, a lot of the time we find these people safe and well and uh, they've just taken some time out or they 
you know, made some comments to their friends that they didn't think would be taken in a certain way. But we just have to, from our end, do everything possible. And because he lived around here, I just thought we might have a look and see if we can see anything. So we've just had word that the guy that we were looking for has just presented at Manly Hospital asking for help, which is really good. So a good ending to our search. He's alive and hopefully getting the treatment that he needs.